getting the litter box to not show up in the midst of my bookshelves it's a trip <laughs> I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things and this video has been like weeks in the making I've tried to film it two times I did film it one time had to scrap the whole thing because it was a damn fucking mess so here we are welcome to my bookshelf tour so just so we're clear the bookshelves that we're gonna go through are these tiny bookshelves from Ikea those are mine and then we have this big bookshelf which my husband and I share and I take up one, two, three, four of those shelves and the rest are his. Now I'm not going to show you his books but if you want to leave me a comment down below and <laughs> we'll do another bookshelf tour of his books. He reads mostly fantasy so maybe you guys are into that. And then let me get the window open so that you can actually see that I have Two other bookshelves which are my TBR shelves that are over there. Oh look at that, I didn't even have to open the window. So these are my TBR shelves and that is my desk. So I'm going to show you my desk area and I'm going to show you basically every physical book I own. Which is kind of daunting and I'm already terrified but we're going to get through this together. Also I decided not to put any makeup on for this video, I hope you don't mind. Let's get to the tour. So this is my first shelf and this is what I like to call my non-fiction shelf but there are some books under here that are definitely not fiction. If you're wondering what this is, this just is a, a Christmas present I got my husband a long time ago. He's a Cthulhu puppet. That is really funny and he just chills up here but we're gonna put him down here for a while and we're gonna start with the books. Alright, so the first book that I have up here is how to Be a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery, illustrated by Rebecca Green. Then I have Caught in the Eyes, and this is by Carolyn Alexander, which by the way, I have another book of hers, you'll see her, well, not by her, but um, translated by her. Then I have this book called And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness, and illustrated by Rovina Kai. This is one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read. It's got incredible illustrations, I 100% recommend it. And if you've been around my channel long enough, then you know that this is probably my favorite comic book, which is called The Magic Order by Mark Miller and Olivier Coppel. The first book we have is Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. Um, I did a book to movie adaptation project of this book. Um, in case you're interested, I will link it up above. Witches, James First and the English Witch Hunts. I also did a reading vlog for this book. Um, this is by Tracy Borman. Over here, I have On Writing by Stephen King. This is obviously the Spanish edition. Then we have Gorillas in the Mist by Diane Fossey. This is one of my all-time favorite books and one of the first books, uh, non-fiction books that I read when I was a child. Then we have The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. And as you can see, this book has been through the ringer because it's been with me for a really long time. This is about the discovery of the Ebola virus and I love this book. This is the book that got me interested in microbiology. Then I have a, a book that I go back and forth on whether I want to get rid of or not and that is Tudor the Family Story by Leanda Delisle. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the only reason I keep this book around is because it goes so well with the shelf that I really want to keep it just because it goes really nicely in the show. Then we have arguably my favorite non-fiction read which is, which is The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. If you saw my latest vlog which I will link up above, this is the, or I don't know if it's going to be out, but anyway, this is the book that actually has helped me get through my thalassophobia. This one was the one that started it all and it's absolutely one of my favorite non-fiction reads of all time. Even if you don't like non-fiction, I really recommend that you read this book. Other Minds, The Octopus and the Evolution of Intelligent Life by Peter Godfrey Smith. I can't say much on that because I haven't read it. Then we have the first non-fiction book I ever read when I was about nine years old and that is Born Free by Jory Adamson and it's still one of my all-time favorites. This is a new copy because my old copy was so tattered and so like just it was falling apart, like pages would fall out of it. So I asked for a new version for my birthday. Mama's Last Hug by Franz the Wall. I love this book, it's really wonderful. I recommend that you read it. I actually recommend that you read everything that I own because I only keep books that I really love. And then we have 
You guys know this one too, Spying on Whales by Nick Python, which is all about aquatic life. Another book that has really helped me deal with my fear of aquatic life. And just so you know how much this has helped me, um, a few years ago, about three years ago, I wouldn't be able to look at this picture of whales. And now I look at it and I think that the, it's a beautiful picture. So there you go. All right, then we get to my second shelf. Again, this is just an Ikea shelf that we bought. This is actually an outside shelf and Rodrigo put like cardboard on the side so that it would like the books wouldn't fall over. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the little bulbs up because if not, they're going to be on in the way the whole time. There we go. Again, these are just taped here. So let's start on this side. Plantas medicinales y curativas. This book is beautiful on the inside, by the way. So it's just a fun little like green witch book. All right, then we get to this collection here, which we're gonna go through even though here there are some more. Um, I am having a hard time with this collection because honestly there are books in here that I don't have an incline, I'm sorry, an inclination to read, but they all look so pretty together that I wanna keep them all. North Anger Abbey by Jane Austen, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and as somebody that doesn't read Jane Austen, I have a lot of Jane Austen. This beautiful edition of Withering Heights, you're gonna see another one, but this is this, these, all these books are in Spanish, by the way, I, I guess you can tell from the titles, but they're just so pretty and they look so good on my shelves. Every video I post, I get questions about these books. The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Then I have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, well, whom I always called Louisa Marie for some reason. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Emma by Jane Austen. The House of Joy by Edith Wharton. I don't know if that's the real title of that book. And then we have Persuasion by Jane Austen. And I mean, these books are just so gorgeous and I just, don't know if I'm ever gonna read them. Thornhill by Pam Smee. Then we have the special edition version of uh, A Monster Calls. You're gonna see another one of these, but this one is the one that has the beautiful illustrations inside. Look at that. Then we have, this is Barnes and Nobles, leather bound book editions with the um, beautiful sprayed edges. Obviously, I got these before I was vegan, don't even ask. <laughs> Um, this is Neil Gaiman, American Gods, and a Nancy Boyce. And just so you know, I haven't read this one. Isaac Asimov's The Foundation Trilogy, and I didn't show you for this one, but look at that. How gorgeous is that? Then I have the novelization of the Star Wars Trilogy, the first, like, the original trilogy. And the cool thing is, inside we have the original concept art for C-3PO and R2-D2. And on the other side, we have... Luke and Vader fighting. Sofia Rey, El Bosque Profundo. If you saw my most beautiful cover of books that I own, this was there. It's an amazing book. And the, again, the end pages. And over here we have something that I ask for my birthday every year, which is the Saga Omnibuses. Here's the book two of Saga. And then we have book one of Saga, which by the way, I hate this image and it's got nothing to do with the fact that there is a baby that is suckling on a booby. I just don't like it. Like the proportions are all off and I just think that there were so many other beautiful things you could have put on the cover and like that, I hate that image. But anyway, so that's everything on this shelf. Let's go to the next one. All right, then we get to my third shelf, which I like to call my meh shelf because most of the books that are here are my meh books. And if you saw my not five stars, but still recommend you read. You would have seen most of these books. We're gonna start with The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. My beautiful um, hardcover edition of Orson Scott's Scar Ender's Game. Please don't buy these books new. Please buy them used because Orson Scott Card is a horrible person. Then we have Autonomous by Anna Lee Newitz. Horror Store by Grady Hendrick. Daniel's Story by Carol Matas. I think this is the book that has been with me the longest in my life. The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedgwick. A book I still don't understand. The Man in the High Castle by Phil K. Dick. Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. I'm gonna go with Heinlein. I'm gonna say it like that, so. Rosewater by Tate Thompson. 13 Days of Midnight by Leo Hunt. Rebel Rising, 
A Star Wars Stories by Beth Revis. Uh, Horror According to Lovecraft, which is just basically a bunch of short stories that Lovecraft really enjoyed. And as you can see over here, we have my letter board, which just says Moody Reads August 2020, because right now, when I'm filming this, it's August 2020. But behind here, we actually have more books, so I'm gonna take it down. We have all the extra little letters here that I still wonder how I'm gonna spell September on there. Okay, then over here we have, this is not actually my husband's book, but I really wanna read it. Sergei Lukyanenko, <laughs> so sorry, Guardians of the Night. Then here we have Hidden as a Treasure as it is, my favorite book of all time, or at least one of the editions that I have, which is Eterno Oscuro by Miguel Angel Llado. The Encounter by Frederick Pohl. Then I have book two of the Hyperion series by Dan Simmons, but I don't have book one, which is The Fall of Hyperion. Then we have The Ascension of Endymion, which by the way, I called Endyman in my last video. I'm so sorry, but this is also by Dan. And that is the first shelf done. Now let's get over to the next shelf. Now I'm gonna warn you, there's no rhyme or reasons to my shelves. It's mostly what I want on camera and also what fits where. <laughs> like seriously, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't do things by author or by anything. I try to keep series together, but you're gonna see that it's like me, a chaotic mess. So let's start. Up here we have this really cool edition of Star Wars, the first book. This was a novelization and this is a first edition that came out before the movie came out in Spanish that a good friend of mine got for me at a thrift shop. Underneath that we have one of my favorite books of all time, Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. And underneath that we have another of my favorite books of all time, <laughs> The Only Good Indians. I just want you to know this book is balls. It's so good. I keep thinking about this book so much. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. A Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. The Slow Regard of Silent Things, which is crazy that that is named that in English because in Spanish, this literally translates to the music of silence. Then up next, I have the Shadow Children series, which includes Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haydix, Among the Imposters, Among the Betrayed, Among the Barons, Among the Brave, Among the Enemy, and Among the Free. Up next, we have my normal floppy paperback edition of A Monster Calls, and as you can see, this one's in English, the other one was in Spanish. Then we have my hardcover copy of The Search for One Love by Tony de Trulitz. The Emerald Atlas, The Book of Beginnings by John Stevens. Up here we have some more stacked books. We have Vicious by B. E. Schwab. Another book whose title I don't understand where they got from, but this is The Stone Gods in English. And if you read Spanish or if you want to know, that says Blue Planet, and I always end up calling it Blue Planet. And then we have The Vanished Birds by Simon Menace. Down here we have a bind up of V.C. Andrews' Flowers in the Attic and Petals on the Wind. Then we have a bind up of the next two books in that series, which is If There Be Thorns and Seeds of Yesterday. And then we have the final book in the series. And then we have the final book in the series, which is Garden of Shadows. Then we have The Dark Beneath the Eyes by Amelinda Berbe. Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. The Changeling by Victor LaVale. Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And if you know, that is an actual accurate title. Then we have La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Zafón or The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. Los Cinco Elementales or The Five Elementals by uh, Minerva Gallo Fred. This is part of the Leyendas de Oniria or Legends of Oniria series. Then we have one of the first books I read this year, which is The Dollmaker of Krakow by R. M. Romero, which by the way, Reagan from Peru's project just on hold and it kind of broke my heart. Then we have Las Fuente, La Fuente de las Tinieblas, Relatos Suburbanos de los Mitos de Cthulhu by Aitor Solar. This is just a Spanish book. And this is basically like Lovecraftian legends but in urban settings and it's actually a really fun Halloween. Las Tres Muertes de, de Fermín Salvochea by Jesús Cañadas. Then we have Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman Good Omens but this is the Spanish version Buenos Presagios with the cover of the TV show which I don't mind because the TV show was perfect. Then I have two self-published indie uh, poetry collections by Spanish authors Francisco Martinez Dominguez 
and oh this one is actually by Miguel Delibes so um, no this is actually not by Miguel Delibes this is authors that took inspiration from Miguel Delibes who is a very famous Spanish author and wrote poems based on his work. Then we have my one and only contemporary YA romance, which is Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, this is such a silly book, and yet it, you know what? I'm gonna give it props because it got me out of a really dark time, and it just makes me smile when I look at it, it and its stupid pink cover on my shelves. The final three books I got here are actually books that I'm planning on gifting a friend of mine and it's the Among the Hidden, so the first book in the Shadow Children series. Then I have No One Writes to the Colonel, which I never know if I'm saying that right, by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And then I have Vinti by Neri Okorofor. I have already read all of these books and love them, but uh, I keep them here until I can finally, <laughs> when COVID allows me to send off a package to my friend. And that is everything on this shelf. Let's go up to the next one. Welcome to the Tetris shelf. Showing you these books is not something I'm looking forward to, but I love you so much that I'm going to do it. So let's start up here. Um, up here, by the way, are books that just fit. <laughs> these books I actually put thought into and everything, but these ones are just like, you fit, therefore you go. All right? So let's start with this one. This is Maeva y el Dragón de Egar by Minerva Gallofre. This is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. And this is my French edition because I read Annihilation in French and in English because I am clearly a Mexican. Then we have these beautiful editions of the Dune series. Uh, if you're wondering where Dune is, you're going to see it in a minute. But we have Dune Messiah, which I have read. And we have Children of Dune, which I haven't read. And for some reason, I'm avoiding reading, but I think it's because I originally thought like this was going to be it, this was the end of the trilogy, but apparently I've got three more books to go, so I'm not looking forward to that. Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Yellow Wallpaper. This book I actually haven't read, but it fit here so well that it just sits here until Halloween comes and I can read it, and that is John Saul's Darkness. Then we have my English edition of Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's Good Omens. I actually love this one. And now we have this stupid book that I keep because it makes me happy. But this is the worst book I've ever read in my life, but it makes me so happy because it's so bad. It's like, it's trying so hard. <laughs> and that is Dragon's Code. This is by Gigi McCaffrey, but this is an Anne McCaffrey Dragon Riders of Pern series, which is apparently amazing, but let me tell you, this book is not amazing, and yet I'm never getting rid of this book. This book just made me laugh. It was so bad. Up next, what we have here is the Flowers in the Attic series in this beautiful edition. I wanted to show you the, the spines together, but we have Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. Then we have the Petals on the Wind. If there be thorns. Here we have Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. If you've seen my science fiction recommendation video, then you have seen this book. This is the Oxford Book of Science Fiction Stories by Tom Shippey. It's, sorry, it's edited by Tom Shippey. And as you can see, my version is just tattered because I just sometimes just open this book and read whatever story comes. It's so, so good. Finally, in the top of the shelves, we have The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. Up next, we have the Spanish original Dune trilogy. That's why I kept thinking that that was the original three books. We have Dune by Frank Herbert, Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert, and then we have Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. These are actually my husband's editions, but because I love Dune so much, I keep them down here with my books. Then we have the Wayfair trilogy, which much to my dismay is being turned into a series because there's going to be another one, so where do I put it? But anyway, we have the first book, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Second book, A Closed and Common Orbit. And the third book, and possibly my favorite of the three, Record of a Spaceborn Future. Then we have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. 
Then we have the two books currently out in the Nevermore, I believe it's going to be series, and it's Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend and Wonder Smith, The Calling of Morgan Crow, also by Jessica Townsend. And if you're wondering, this stupid $4.99 sticker is stuck on here, like it's part of the book, it was printed with the book, and whoever had that idea, I hope, is in one of Dante's circles of hell. Then we have the wonderful Wondla trilogy, which was written by Tony Trilizzi, and it's possibly one of my favorite. It's definitely my favorite trilogy of all time. Okay, it's my favorite middle grade trilogy of all time. And those are The Search for Wondla by Tony Trilizzi, A Hero for Wondla by Tony Trilizzi, and The Battle for Wondla by Tony Trilizzi. You've all seen this book 101 times. This is Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. Up next, we have my favorite series of all time. Yeah, we're gonna call it that, and that is the Monstermologist series. And I want you to pay attention to the covers, okay? So I'm gonna show you each cover. This is book one. The Monstermologist by Rick Yancey. This is book two, The Curse of the Wendigo or Wendigo. I'm not sure the, the pronunciation. This is book three, The Isle of Blood. And this is book four, The Final Descent. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but with each book, book one has one crow on it, book two has two crows on it, book three has three crows on it, and book four has four crows on it. And I think that that's a really cool detail that I never noticed because I actually am not detail oriented. Then we have another one of my favorite series. This is a dark academia series called The Magicians by Lev Grossman. The books are The Magicians by Lev Grossman, The Magician King by Lev Grossman, and The Magician's Land by Lev Grossman. Then, <laughs> surprise, surprise, we have another series which the next book is coming out this year which I will probably ask for for my birthday as I am not buying books for myself but these are um, the middle grade series that Victoria Schwab has and it has City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones and the last two books here are actually not a series we have Night Film by Marisha Pessel and Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Now we see the first thing that is not a book here, and this is my Big Daddy, and Bioshock is my favorite video game of all time, and my husband actually got me this for Christmas, along with the whole game trilogy, so this is the first, and I think only thing in my shelves that is not a book so far. War of the Lower Sea by Max Brooks. The Last Wish by Andres Sakowski. Bioshock Rapture by John Shirley. Now we have two mangas which I really want to continue but mangas are so expensive and you read them so fast. But we have The Girl from the Other Side and this is by Nagabe. And that, then we have The Girl from the Other Side 2 also by Nagabe. Next up, we have Pablo Neruda, 20 poemas de amor y una canción desesperada, Los versos del capitán. I think the translation for this is 20 po love poems and a desperate song, verses for the captain. Then we have another little cute manga called A Man and His Cat, and this is by Umi Sakurai. And then we have my physical edition, because I also have the Kindle edition of Ursula K. Le Guin's The Word for World is Forest. Starting on this side, we have Brandon Sanderson Skyward, and of course we have the sequel Starsight. Then we have another trilogy, which I am currently in the middle of. I have N.K. Jemison's The Broken Earth trilogy, which is the fifth season. The Obelisk Gate, which I am 30% done with, but I'm reading very slowly. And The Stone Sky by N. Up next, we have the complete Rick Riordan um, Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, which is The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian, all by Rick Riordan. Then we have A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent. This is the first of six books by Marie Brennan, all about Lady Trent. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the rest of the five books simply because I'm running out of shelf space, y'all. I don't know where to put them. <laughs> But I absolutely love this series. Sorry if things look a little bit different. We had to have a battery change in the middle of this because believe it or not, this is a very long video. <laughs> but anyway, next up we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. And yes, I do have the Spanish edition. I plan on getting the English edition one day maybe, but is I don't know. Is it really necessary to have both editions? I don't know. 
Then we have El Cielo en un Infierno Cabe by Cristina López Barrio. I am not going to try to translate that because I don't think there is a translation for that. I think the closest I can get to is Heaven in a Heaven Fits into a Piece of Hell by Cristina López Barrio. The Talk Man by CJ Tudor. I found this at a like discount store and it was like two euros and I remember everybody was talking about it on booktube so I got it and I actually really enjoyed it as you can see because it's still on my shelves. Next up we have El Principe Destronado by Miguel Delibes. Then we have H.P. Lovecraft's The Alchemist and Other Tales. Then we have this thrifted edition of Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. Then we have two Penguin Modern Classics editions of Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House and We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Shirley Jackson always makes me feel like I'm too stupid to read but I enjoy her books anyway. Then we have the books that made me realize that I needed to go on a book buying ban because I bought the entire Sherl uh, um, Sherlock Holmes, well yeah Sherlock Holmes or uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, Penguin English Library Classics editions um, at like at one go and it was like a lot of money and but I really enjoyed the story so anyway we have A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle, The Sign of Four, The Hound of Bakersville, The Valley of Fear, The Five Orange Pips and Other Cases, The Adventure of the Six Napoleons and Other Cases, and The Adventure of the Engineer's Thumb and Other Cases. And yes, I do have another edition of the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and this is in the English, um, Penguin English Classic Library and I didn't remember that I already had this book so I bought it and now I have two versions of it. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, this was actually gifted to me by my beautiful friend Elfie. And then I have this beautiful edition of Dante's Infernos by Dante. Uh, this just covers Dante's Inferno. This is actually not the full novel, but I couldn't give this one up because it's just so beautiful. If you want a closer look at this, I would suggest that you go to my Instagram because I have a picture of just how incredible it is and all the beautiful detail in it. My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry and I don't know if the camera is picking up the beautiful green foiling on this Imagine if these if this had green sprayed edges. Oh my god. Then we have The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. Tucked in here we have The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde which is just a fun little story about a sad little ghost. And then we have and then we have Essential Stories and Pose of Edgar Allan Poe in this beautiful, matte, wonderful cover. I actually bought this one because it's got my favorite um, Poe um, short story, which is uh, William Wilson. And that is this shelf done. Let's go up to the next shelf, which is, for me, the most exciting shelf of them all. Alright, and as you can see, this shelf basically has almost no books on it. What it does have over here is my favorite books of all time and then over there it's my kind of more urgent TBR I guess. That gets changed out every month but I like the, the white space here. I feel like everything is so cluttered and this is just like a really nice white space. Let's go through the things that are not books. We have this, where it's where we put incense. We have two little fake plants because we have cats and they love to eat everything. And they would eat any plant that we put in the house and then vomit it all over our sofa. If you are wondering if this has happened before, it has. That's why we have fake plants. This is an old picture of me and my husband. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually blonde in that picture, which is crazy that I dyed my hair blonde because I just don't seem like a girl that would go blonde but it actually looked really good on me and I love this picture and it just goes really nicely in this space. Alright, over here we have like I said my favorite books. They're not in order of my most favorite to least favorite. They're basically in the order of height because I like to put books in order of height. So let's start with Dune by Frank Herbert. Here's my other version of El Eterno Oscuro by Miguel Angel Yado. I kind of collect these because there's about only 500 of them in the world and I want to own 
a few of them because I'm a hoarder. Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. And before anybody says anything, I know that this is like the shittiest translation of this book, but it was the only one that I could find at an affordable price, and I actually re read this on my Kindle in a much better translated edition, but I wanted to own a physical edition, and it's matched with my Dune book, so I'm not gonna complain. You all know what this is. This is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. Have I talked about this book enough? And finally, we have Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Tammy O. Oh, which, I mean, again, have I talked about this book enough? Over here, I just have my favorite bookmark of all time because I stan Sansa Stark. So I just keep her here just to remind myself that girls can be girly and we can still be badasses. So over here, we have the books that are most like urgent on my TBR. So I haven't read any of these for now. Submerged by a bunch of different authors. We have Ayala, Esterile, Esteladia, Deering, Pharrell, and Bartel. Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cristo. The Five, The Untold Lives of the Woman Killed by Jack the Ripper by Haley Rubenhold. Then I have The Art of the Space Between Worlds, which I actually won in a giveaway and I'm really, really, really excited to read it. The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. What a Fish Knows, The Inner Lives of Our Underwater Cousins by Jonathan Balcombe or Balcom. I'm not sure which one it is. If you do know, please correct me down in the comments. Armageddon House by Michael Griffin and Girl Boy C by Chris Vick. And that's it. That's everything that's on this shelf. And let me tell you, this is actually my favorite shelf. And it's so sad that you guys never get to see it on camera. Okay guys, I know I said I was going to show you my TBR shelf which is over there, but this video is already long enough. I didn't realize how long it would be, so I decided to split this video into two parts. So this was my red shelf or mostly my <laughs> red shelves because there are some books there that I hadn't read. But like I said, 90% of the books that you saw there I have already read. So I'm leaving my TBR shelf for next week and I will show you all those books and then by the end of this mini series you would have seen every single book that I own. But honestly, filming this is so difficult. <laughs> Major props to people that do this that don't have anybody helping them because my husband was helping me the entire time and we were both like, what the hell, this is so hard. Also, I kind of like this as a filming area. I like the the vibe of it and you can still see my shelves but anyway but anyway i really hope that you enjoyed the video i hope that this was somehow interesting to you i know that i used to love bookshelf tours when i was watching booktube so i hope you enjoyed mine i hope that i don't know maybe got you interested into some of the books that i don't normally talk about so yeah without any further ado i bid you adieu with a reminder that i post every monday Wednesdays, and fridays without fail come hell or high water and i will see you in another galaxy far far away thank you guys for watching bye guys <laughs>